Welcome back to the show. Once again, guys, today we're going to talk about cooling system repairs and the problems you may have afterwards. Now, the biggest problem you're going to have after any kind of cooling system repair where you drain the coolant and then refill it is you may have an overheat condition that you never had before. Or the more common concern is you'll have no heat in the cabin here. So the HVAC system will not put out heat no longer. And on some of the vehicles, like the 2.3 liter and 2.5 liter in the Fusion and the Escape, they have a reverse cooling system. So your engine may actually overheat out of nowhere. Okay, never did before. And you'll have no heat in the cabin. I know it's a double negative, but that's the way it happens because you have air trapped in the system. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the Ford vehicles, especially the trucks, the heater core, okay, is way high in the cooling system. And where's all that air going to go? That air pocket you introduced into the vehicle, where's it going to get trapped? The highest point. It's going to get up there somehow as the coolant circulates through and it's going to sit there. Now, how do you get it out? Well, the ideal way is to vacuum fill the cooling system in the first place. It's almost a must in the 2.3 liter and 2.5 liter with that reverse cooling system. Now, the reason why those ones are overheating the 2.3 and the 2.5 is because the air pockets on the back side of of the, the thermostat itself. So therefore, it's never getting that coolant to touch and that wax to expand and open it up. So of course, you're gonna overheat and then you're gonna get uh, air in the cooling system in the heater core. So you'll have an, uh, no heat condition inside the cab because it's not able to transfer. And on most of the vehicles, that's the problem you're gonna have. You're not gonna have no heat inside the cabin here anymore because there's air trapped inside of here. That heat transfer cannot happen. So today we're gonna to show you a quick, easy method that you can use to kind of purge the air through the system by forcing the air pockets out of there. Now, like I said, either way, the best way is to vacuum fill the system, but believe me, this method works very, very well. And if it's filled up and everything's back together, everything looks fine, there's no reason to drain the cooling system, you might as well try this first, okay? And the very first step is going out to the engine and we're gonna check the coolant level and make sure it's topped off before going any further. Now, the first step in this is to make sure that there's enough coolant in your degas bottle to um, keep it nice and full even after we purge the air pocket, okay? So you have your cold fill line, you wanna be about an inch above that so that when it does purge, it doesn't get too low and start sucking air back into the system. So go ahead and fill that overfill system for a cold fill. Make sure your cap is nice and tight and we'll go back into the driver's seat. Okay, now with the coolant bottle overfilled by an inch or so, we're gonna go ahead and start the cold engine up, okay? Start it up. We're gonna let it idle for about 30 seconds or so. Get some oil flowing through there. And then once it's running for a little bit here, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, get some oil flowing. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the engine at 3,500 RPMs and hold it there for 30 seconds, okay? So on a lot of engines, you'll notice you cannot get there unless you keep it in neutral. On this particular vehicle, I can hold it at 3,500. No problem in park. So I want to keep it as steady as possible so we can constantly push that coolant through. Be one consistent push through there and it'll drag any air bubbles out as we're going through there. And it'll be a constant force to push it out instead of on and off, on and off as when you drive, okay? That's the idea behind it. But there is a method to the madness on here. It's a, a sequence to this. So you're gonna do this for 30 seconds. And you're gonna let off. Let it come back down to idle. And then we're gonna turn the engine off for one minute. And we're just gonna let it sit here and burp that air bubble out into the degas bottle. Now your engine should not be hot at this point, so we can go ahead, check our level, but the most accurate way to check it is to actually unscrew the cap, let it level out on there, refill it, again, about an inch above that cold fill line, and then put our cap back on. Now once that coolant level is at the top of the cold fill line, we're gonna come back into the vehicle, we're gonna start it up, okay, and we're gonna let the vehicle idle until it gets to the full hot, full operating temperature. 
Okay, now that the large air pocket is out of the system, we want to try to purge the rest of the air in the system a little at a time. And we're gonna keep doing this procedure until we start feeling heat coming out of the vents, okay? So at this point, the engine's full hot, thermostat is open. We're gonna go ahead and put the engine back at 3,500 RPMs. Try to get it up there and hold it. And we're gonna hold it at 3,500 RPMs for 30 seconds. Now, once 30 seconds has gone by, we're gonna slowly let off the accelerator pedal and let it come back down to an idle. And we're gonna let it idle for 30 seconds. The idea here is we just pushed a large air pocket out of there, the rest of it, another large section of it, whatever it may be, and we're trying to keep that coolant flow um, going in the right direction, back to where it can purge to the degas bottle. That's the reason why, at this point, with the thermostat open and the large air pocket out of there, we're trying to get that air back to the degas bottle. And we're gonna let it idle for another 30 seconds. Now, once it's idle for 30 seconds, we're gonna turn the engine off. And we're gonna let it sit for one full minute. Now, at this point, the system should be purged of any air that's trapped in any orifice within the system. The heater core, um, certain parts of the intake, the block, whatever the situation may be, depending on your, your engine, okay? If it's not, we're gonna go ahead, after waiting that one minute, okay, for the burp, we're going to start once again, and repeat, so again, 3,500 RPMs, hold it steady for 30 seconds. And we're gonna try to purge more and more air. Okay. Try to get it there. 30 seconds. Down back to idle for another 30 seconds. And then we're gonna shut it off for a minute again. Now each time you do this, you want to recheck and reevaluate your heat output at your vents. Okay, now once you've done that at least two times, I found you need to do it two, three times, that 30 seconds at 3500, 30 seconds at idle, one minute wait time, we're going to start to check the heat output at idle. And that's the key here. I want to start it up, it's full operating temperature, we did the purge on there. You want to come over here, put your system on full heat. Let's say number two on there maybe, okay? I'll put the floor so it's not blowing your face. And you're literally gonna come over here at idle and you're gonna feel for the heat. And you'll know when it's the right amount of heat coming out of there when it feels normal, okay? The idea is you want the heat to be coming out at idle. Not just at higher RPMs, you want it to be coming out at idle also. And that'll really tell you if the system is actually purged of air or not. Because when you're revving it over here and you're going down the road, of course you're gonna get heat as more of it goes through there and kind of starts purging the air out of there and displacing it. But once you settle back down to idle, that bubble kind of settles back down to idle too, okay? And you start losing your heat. So at idle, regular idle, hot operating temperature, you should be nice and warm coming out of these vents. And that's how you know you have all the air out of your system. Now let's say you perform this procedure to the T three, four, five times, and the heat is coming out a little bit better, but it's still not there yet. You may need to actually vacuum fill the cooling system. Now I have a whole video on how to use a vacuum filling tool. I'll put the links to it down below, the tool and how to use it. I give a demonstration on it. Now what I can tell you, the best practices I found when using this tool to really get all the air out of the system that's hidden deep in the cooling system is to fully drain the cooling system first. If it's brand new coolant, simply collect it in a clean pan so you can reuse it, okay? You're gonna put this tool onto there and you're gonna let it pull a vacuum for 10 to 15 minutes, believe me. 
instantly it's going to go down to like 28 inches of mercury and you're going to think there's a vacuum in the system, we're good to go. Believe me, you want to put a vacuum on it for like 10, 15 minutes, especially in the 2.3 liter and 2.5 liter Duratec engines because of the reverse cooling system. At that point, you can go ahead and refill it and of course the coolant is going to take up any voids in there where the, the vacuum was inside of there, the void of air. Okay, and it's going to take care of the situation where you have the air pocket in there. This video is for those of you out there that are just trying to get through other repairs in the vehicle and now you have a new concern. You just want the vehicle to work. You want your heat. It's freezing outside and this is a cool little trick you can use to kind of purge it out yourself and 90% of the time this trick, this procedure actually works. The other 10% of the time you need to use that tool. So again, I'll link to everything down below. I hope this helped and I hope you have a great day.